So they're going to have to basically just accept the fact that if, if they go for stronger lanes, then that's fine, or they go for counter team fight. And they go with the Nyx again as the first pickup, as well as the Magnus. It's almost a. You must pick up the Nyx right now, but they say no! They say Gyro, they say Darkseer. It's a full on team fight right now for Team Empire. They don't care about the possibility of the initiation with the Nyx Bomb Mag or the Nyx who will just silently come up and stab you in the back with Vendetta. And then a Nyx will basically rip out your insides and take him as life. Hence it's called Feast. It's no, no Tide Hunter. Third pickup. They're going over to Gyro, Coddle as well as Darkseer. Instantly makes me think of Rubik as an extra supporter. But they've got Nyx as a setup, so they may, may, may try and go for something else. With Mag RP, Latrac, Lina, these heroes remain. wouldn't be a bad option for them. But do they want to pick them up already? Because you've got so many options going to the later portion it's of it. Of if you manage to be running the middle lane, you might just try and get your long laner now. But who is really left? Chen. Chen. Of course. Radiant team they can't pass up Aki's uh. Chen. Decision is made and Aki's Chen is taken. Team and then instantly the Weaver is removed. We're about the high damage of Loader, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised too if they do still... Ah, uh, maybe not. Maybe not. It depends how they want to play the mag. If they end up playing mag on a safe lane... Oh, that still doesn't work in my brain. Because they could run him as a support, but it's... It's not what they'll be looking for. They don't have to worry about that quick and power buff up. It's not as though they're looking for a Nakes to get completely overpowered. What I'm thinking about a little bit more is going to be their laning. And how, how do they really just blend all of this together? Team ban. And how do they all also find that space for the levels? Someone that can, is able, ca able to bring down Gyro means they still need a big damage dealer. But they also want to look for the push. They want to try and go down with that Juggernaut. Even running him as a core hero is still not a bad thing. Loader has done that. It's not always just S4's role to take up. That role is, uh, yeah, as, as, the, as the Juggernaut. Whenever it's picked up, they just run them in that mid solo for that reason. So they have some extra space, and they go with another pusher, another another carry hero for for loader. And we'll see if they do want to commit remaining. themselves to that one. At this point, Godblack's not too concerned, and you see it ban the SD, which means instantly you must ban out the PL. You instantly must ban out the PL. SD gets banned. You have a keeper of the light. They can run the gyro in the middle lane. It could also be a bait. They could just still be planning on on having uh, Airman. Run that role as a gyro the entire time through and just not give a crap. They will ban out the juggernaut just in cases. Uh, but by banning out the SD, you take out a decent support hero and you also take out oh, you take out an extra ban of no tide. It was a pure a pure bait that PL could be banned for absolutely no reason whatsoever. And we see something like the Queen of Pain come out instead. With the Queen of Pain to go up against the mag in the middle lane, the gyro to go on the safe lane, Darkseer. Either to attempt the long lane, or to just sit inside of his own jungle, and then the Keeper of the Light to babysit, maybe stack, maybe farm. That's if they want to try and out-farm no Tidehunter. If not, we could be looking at support Gyro, support Keeper of the Light. Five seconds there is, however, a lot... There's a lot of stuns missing right now. Homing missile's not guaranteed. Metal Leak is not guaranteed. Darkseer has a vac, so you got an interruption ability. But there's no stable lockdown. But they don't really need it just yet. A hero like a Weaver would have been perfect because like with no lockdown, you would just go nuts on their ass. Unless they're looking to hunt. And I'm wondering too if we can see a return. Even though Funny's not in the team anymore, <laughs> if they run an aggressive tri-lane to pick up something like Radiant a Clinks. There's our Queen of Pain for the mid-solo. I'm still going to say... No, 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 no. It's... If that's the mid-solo, Gyro would have been in the middle lane, and yeah, then Darkseer would have been up on the top lane, if they were to go on the clinks. And then they... and it would have actually been nice too, you got the chain, chain extra extra life point creeps. Works fantastic when it comes to the uh, the ultimate of clinks. But they go with the Queen of Pain. So a stable laner up against the mag, and a real pain in the ass to play against. Ten you can never bowl remaining. crow correctly. If you do, you got to move back. Similar to what Five happens when you got like napalm stacks and you want to get a full bottle charge off. And no time's no time's got the only uh, only choice is either to change the hot hero that remaining. goes up against Queen of Pain in the middle lane, or they just accept the fact that Mag won't have Five the smoothest time in the world. Remaining. So S4 last pickup. He's Wind got no time. Windrunner will be the selection. Admiral Bulldog. I think it's the only hero left in my memory of what he plays in a long lane. Next to a bounty Earth hunter. And then ES instant pickup Dying by Team Empire. Back. So Coddle 
ES. And I'm actually even feeling this as an aggressive try lane with the gyro. I'm feeling it. Because you got Chen, he's a little bit more passive. You get a good fissure off. Keeper of Light will give you all your mana, so you just spam it off. Something very, very similar to what, um... Uh, am I really going to use IEG as an example in two days? Uh, uh, twice in one day? Um, but an example of their aggressive tri lane, we're just able to spam it from range. And do a lot, a lot of damage. And then Jara can get in close. You've got the Color Blast to follow up. You get all of this Five together. The other option is they just run it as a safe lane. Anti -mage. An anti-mage. Oh, really? Um, yay! Anti-mage! Woo! Yeah! Uh, coming out for us right now. Gold Black will be the support. Vigos, Queen of Pain. It was Blow Your Brain in the Hard Farmer as a gyro. Silent supporting Keeper of the Light. And then Darkseer to be played by a Scandal. So everything as expected as far as their laning goes is just where the tri lane goes. Does it go top or does it go south? And that's the question which awaits us. And there's no question Loda will be taking up that role as the anti-mage. Admiral Bulldog takes up the role as the Magnus though. So it will be an offlane mag S4 up on as the Nyx. So that means we're looking at him going in towards the middle lane. So we're actually going to play a normal role of a Nyx, which is going to be that mid-solo. Ever since he did get the change around the Spike Carapace, not that many people have been running him as a supporter. The only team out there which I believe has really been doing it effectively has been Virtus Pro. And that's going uh, with three points with the Impel at the very, very start. One point, Scarab, uh, one, one point Carapace, and then one point up in the Mana Boom. That was kind of like the start of it all, and then into your Vendetta, and from there, whatever you want to do. Uh, there's just because... You're going to time your carapaces a lot more. You can't be as aggressive with the Nyx as you used to be able to. So a quick, quick pause. Don't know if something has gone wrong on the stage. No Titus is like they're talking. And uh, it was, in fact, Empire that called out for the pause. So we'll wait for the camera angle to switch back over to, over to them. See someone underneath the desk. Nope, they're just taking a, t just taking a moment. It's a tactical pause. <laughs> One minute and 21 seconds into the game. Got to start early, peoples. Got to start early. I guess we have a great time. So they are, they're going to run a defensive try line here, no tide. No surprise there. They're running an anti-mage. An anti-mage. Ooh, nice mask. What has Loda got on this guy? The rare mask. The gifts of Yorskleth. So we'll be starting off in a moment. So good red rock and rumble. And off we go. So S4 middle lane, EGM going to be a support wind runner in this case because S4 is going to be running in towards that middle lane. And that leaves Loader as the final one. Up towards the top lane. I think I'm getting my wish. Just judging by their movements, I think I'm getting my wish. Where it'll be uh, Team Empire running an aggressive try lane up here on the top. They'll be using the Gyro, the Keeper of the Light. Already first point up in Illuminate. And then one point up in the Fissure. They want to nail whoever they can find. They know they've got a better t uh, better uh, level 1 fight. So Vigos moving in first. Interesting to see what ability he skills up very, very quickly. They'll see load up. They see Chen. They'll move up. There's no wards here on uh, on Ammon. I'll blow your brain. I say Ammon. Did I say M? I think I said Ammon before. My bad. Blow your brain. Um, <laughs> Bottle comes off from Vigos, which he's not actually rushing. There's no rush bottle here for Vigos, and he's up against the Nyx. It's not the way he wants to play it. And wow, Silent! Way too far out. He was trying to D-Ward. He was attempting to D-Ward. And gets completely caught out. That is just... Oh man, that, that destroys this top lane almost. Gives the first blood over. It went to Aki. So now Chen with extra cash too, which means we get early arcane boots. Give him a faster progression through the jungle. We could even be looking at seeing a faster mech too. He wants this centaur. And with the extra normal attacks, even EGM takes some damage. Call a blast flies. Fisher as well. EGM, another barrage, but then it doesn't help him when he's inside a wind run. That barrage is still gonna hit. And Loader, looking for a little bit of a burn. He's gonna start off, but again another barrage before he runs out of all of his mana. And keeper of the light. Makes a little bit more of a uh, a buffer. While the Wilkin, looking for a blink up, while your brain, he's still got no mana whatsoever. Well, Loader will give her level 6 and the Wilkin from Mackie. Two kills already. Shackle won't latch here. But that Wilkin stalked him the entire time. Loader sets it up, and the Wilkin finishes the job. So now there's two hero kills going the way of no tide up here on the top lane. 
And now, even then, they battle up against a tornado. Silent. All he wants to do is regenerate. And this world can get to live forever. Maybe not. Fisher. Okay, forever does seem to be a very short amount of time. But Lo and Vigos. He's got boots awaiting him in a moment. Pops the regeneration room, blinks, screams, he's a decent amount of mana right now. Then a follow-up sting, easy setup, easy follow-up, and that's gonna be S4. Spy Carapace, a blink to scream is all he needs. Three seconds are left on the cooldown. S4 hiding in the tree lines, and he comes in range. Nice guess from Vigos, worked out what was going on. And then Scandal says hello at the same time. Wanted to be involved, but too late. Thank you, man, kind of ultimate. When you hit, when you hit that, that level six. He gets an extra point, nine shell or something. Oh, Shackle flies, doesn't land. Cotter Blast can hit nicely here with the Fissure. Then the Barrage and EGM. Stick Charge will keep him alive. Quickly running away, but then Flat Cannon. How much more damage? That extra hit is not going to be enough. He goes down 26 HP and Loader in range. Also, it's used to stick charges. Cotter Blast will fly just a little bit too far off. Thank God for Boots. EGM will run off that lane, but now you see the potential that comes off from this, from this damage. This magical burst damage. But you also see the problem where they're trying to do this up against the oh, S4. He's in Vendetta. They want the main guy, and they're going to get him. Vendetta hit Mana Burn and Anti Mage Loader. You are such a stealer. S4 will be sent back to base. But Loader pops the Mana Void. He wanted that last hit. He wants the cash. And now Queen of Pain finds another rune. So Invis for her. Vigos lapping it up. Same time Scandal, still maintain the, maintaining control of this bottom lane. Sitting at double the CS of that of Admiral Bulldog. He's trying to last it underneath his towel, while the Iron Shells keep doing all the damage as well. Taking last hits everywhere. Actually, what's our overall? Might have to check this in a moment. Big Oss, Im. Imphiz. Aki should die. Scream and ulti. The scream and ulti is all he wants, but he can't come in range of the tower. Sentries! Oh, EGM! He feels it! Cotter Blast, Fissure as well, and there's the Blink to Scream. Loader as well as EGM hiding in the tree line. And the Fissure holds him out for now. Shackle will fly, doesn't latch from EGM. And blow your brain, looks for him, but not going to be there. Maybe they will find one. Sentry Wars for the Radiant side. S4 is now going to walk in. And then instant ping, but Fissure stuns something. Fissure stuns something. He's back out of range of the Sentry War. They can't go on him now. But another Cottle Blast, pushing through this top. top tower is it's a lot rotated up towards the top lane. Both the mid-solars from No Tide as well as Empire both moved up. Both found nothing. 400 gold for Empire, almost a thousand experience coming the way of No Tide. But they're running it, they're running a Chen of the Jungle. Running up on the top lane, blow your brain. Phase Boots, call down. It's a bit used to take out the Creep Wave of, of everything. And then Chen, double centaurs in from the side, de-warding out, revealing that fact, and now Vigos makes another play. They got one last time, I'd like more than one. Aki, double centaur, you know it's the one they want. They really want him gone before that Hand of God can be done, and set that mech back. But I don't think Queen of Pain can justify it. Sting, ulti, ulti, he's holding it. Fissure as well, he doesn't have to throw it. Centaurs, double stomps, Aki also throwing out the nuke. TP support's coming from Bulldog, so he'll skew himself in, looking for an RP, almost at the line, the shackle won't latch, and now a big echo slam. Well, actually, not that big, not enough damage. AM comes in through the rear. Just to snipe out the uh, the Queen of Pain with the ultimate, but it was EGM that set up really for that. So one for one, Chen for a quap. And S4 TP's back down towards the bottom lane, Scandal's out of mana. And he finds an illusion rune on the bottom. So again, another rune going to be controlled by Empire. But Queen of Pain feeling very, very fragile at throwing out that ultimate. Waited a little bit longer, then didn't bail directly after. And now no tide have the extra space. Admiral Bordoguri with Arcane Boots. 12 minutes in, and now there'll be a death. Yeah, throw the ulti, skewer up. Throw the ulti. RP, throw the ulti! Now he'll throw it! And a quick scream. Gets the kill. Ooh, I, love I think he was worried about the repositioning with the, with the skewer. Could have screwed it out a little bit more there. But Vigos will take that solo kill up on the mag. Some really good levels for him and also delays that blink dagger again. 
Then 164 gold, 12 minutes in. Maybe there for a shaker. Long courier run for a south. 100 gold makes it worth it. Queen of Pain. Didn't want to get mana burn. That's all that was. Same time, blow your brain, finds Lodo, or I should say, Lodo in fact finds blow your brain. Quick rocket barrage, and he does not enough damage to finish this job. AM ultimate, not enough! Stick charges kept him up a little bit longer, but then a blink on down. But now he's blinked Earthshaker. Already with the fissure on cooldown. Blinks away now from S4, came out of the Vendetta with a quick hit. Power shot will fly too. It's right through Goldblack, but now, wow, that's a full mech already from Scandal, of course it is. He's on the bottom lane farm in the entire time. But now they want to push the tier one tower in the mid. 300 life points to get through. Shouldn't take long. Aki gonna check out the middle lane as Admiral Bulldog. Oh, want that haste rune. Look for initiation with it. Battle Fury is already up now for Loader. Aggressive try lane. They stalled it as long as possible. And it really bought them about 5 minutes and that's all. Vigos, not sure if he wants to jump this bottom lane. s 4s here, already throwing out his stun. He's coming down for the rune. And then Centaurs, oh, first, ooh, <laughs> that range was almost right, almost. Now into the mid lane, they want this tower gone, it's been sitting in, nice Fissure, got a blast follow up, something else, Shackle will try and fly, doesn't latch. And they kill off the rocket. And yeah, there's the Cottle Blast, the thing's still coming, it's like, let's just take the tower. No backdoor region on tier 1 tower, so just attack it, but EGM, gonna look for it, Shackle doesn't latch again. And blow your brain, there's a surge, they've got to get this last hit. 49 HP, Scandal comes in, hits it once, and then all three creeps from Aki focus it down. They find EGM, back through the tree line, nice fissure, RP however, nicer from Admiral Bulldog, and then another Centaur stomp, Empire really caught in the back foot. Goldblack is on such low life, he will just be picked off once Aki finds him, maybe not. No, he gets himself, TP'd out to safety, Darkseid's on the run, Shaq will fly, just buy some time to take out all of his mana, and Loda can just ulti him, double kill for Loda. And 4 to 11. And this is now where you take your army and Goblack calls it! You knew one team fight for no time will send this completely out and under 20 minutes the second game is called GG. No Tide will take the second game of the, of the day. 2 nil, and the game is over. Put RP, Empire called out of position even with the shackles not latching. Everything just was not going their way and they knew. They knew the, the, the path that this game would take them down. And they did not want to walk that long yellow brick road. They just basically go straight back to Kansas. So 4-11 wraps up our day for today. We do return tomorrow. I believe the first game is 13 CEST. I'm looking for someone to nod at me here. And, uh, okay, you're nodding at me, but you're not sure. Fantastic. Beautiful. Check out joindota.com for the starting time. Best place to do it. And we'll be starting off tomorrow, I believe, with the lower bracket final matchup. So for people who don't want to have a spoiler alert, it is going to be Fnatic going up against Team Empire, where the upper bracket final matchup, no tied up against Virtus Pro. That is what will await us there. So until then, guys, thanks for watching. We'll be doing a rebroadcast in a couple of moments' time. Hope you enjoy it, but have a very, very good evening. And drink more vodka. We'll see you tomorrow.